Hey everyone, it's Microwave Sam. Welcome. Today's tutorial will be about GitHub, how to get started, and how to use GitHub for the first time. Now, this tutorial is very beginner friendly, and I'll try my best to present it in a way that is very beginner, new, person friendly. Now, to be very quick about it, GitHub is basically a code sharing and publishing service for coders, programmers, developers so that they can collaborate on what they're working on with different people and you can it's like to be even more simple about a social network for the coder programmer and developer now to get first started I think it's good to first create an account now at the link in your browser you can go to github.com github.com build software better and together and you can create a username your email create a password and you sign up for github now I already have an account for github so I'll just sign into my account now I'll just sign in in here when you first go on your account you'll just see this now before you start anything um, the basics are here github bootcamp what do you do you set up git um, there's a quick guide if you want to look at it I'll open it up it says download and install git set up git um, first you need to tell git your name so that you can properly label the commits you make email password caching okay and then you create repositories you can fork repositories which means that you would create a new uh, project from an existing one it's very similar to cloning but we'll, we'll get to that later and then you be social by you sending pull requests um, in pull requests is you ask to um, to work on a project with another person to be simple about it you can watch project star fall friends okay so let's get on to actual um, implementation like what to do so step one was to create an account you sign into your account and you'll see the same thing that I'm seeing right now second step is to go to this website which um, basically it's like a git terminal so that you can run the git commands from the terminal now there are different programs I know there are very user friendly programs but in my opinion it's always good it's really great to just um, have the terminal based knowledge the logic so you better understand github because github by itself in into the expert uh, field into the more complicated and deeper um, once you use it more and more it gets more complicated so understanding the infrastructure behind it is very important so go to this website uh, git dash sem dot com slash download downloads um, I'll leave a link in the description and now for the downloads you can select Windows Mac OS X Linux or Solaris since I have a Windows I'll just click Windows to download and now it downloads this executable file um, that's 14 megabytes after it's done downloading you just click run the executable file then go through the setup wizard over here it'll just install git press next the general license information you press next um, components which components you want to install so basically this gives the general um, components of the git terminal I always call it git shell git terminal but uh, interchangeably I use those words inter interchangeably but the git setup we're basically what we're doing is installing the git shell we press next now you can um, run git from windows command prompt right and that means that on cmd the command prompt of windows you can use git now it's safe um, and it's easy to use use this option if you want git from sigwin sigwin or prompt make sure not to have sigwin's git installed okay so you can do this 
and you can run git and included unix tools from windows command prompt um, what I like to do is I just leave it uh, use git bash only because basically if you select use git bash only um, only from the shell the git shell um, program can you run git uh, which is what I want and then next check out windows style commit unix style line endings check out uh, is uh, we'll convert lf to crlf when checking out text files and I just leave this as default now it's gonna install git um, onto your computer the git shell and this will take a second so we'll just move on um, to what we have to do so in the beginning after you uh, install git you want to um, set up git now that you have git um, installed it's time to configure your settings to do this you need to open git bash git bash git shell git bash and git shell same thing you need to set a username and an email and then we can begin messing around with github so this is almost done and you can view the release notes but we don't have to we'll just finish now at the bottom um, I already had git shell git bash installed um, and you just open git bash it should be on your desktop but you look for the program and open it once you have it open see it's very uh, it's it's a shell bash the git bash open and you want to set up git so first you need to specify a username with this command you type in git config dash dash global username user dot name quote your name here so get your name yeah username I'll just put my actual username on github um, and that should be fine so here is what I'm typing and that should be good then you press enter and then as for email git saves your email to commits you make we use the email address to associate your commits with your github account now you use your github account email and it's the same um, command basically um, except for email and name are different and then you just put your uh, email okay so now that's all set uh, you just press enter and then everything's all set. So after you set up Git, um, you can now go to step two: create repositories. Uh, repositories are where you'll work and collaborate on projects. Uh, think of repositories as a sort of folder that is uploaded onto the GitHub website, and it contains all the code projects or the code of the current project other repo you're working on so go to create a repo um, I mean well yeah click uh, create re repositories and then um, basically create a repo um, just click new repository oops okay create rename me commit your readme master remote add okay so let's go step by step you create a new repository for the repository name you can name it anything you want um, we'll just name it test github uh, repo name will just be the name of your folder that you basically have on github of the pr current project you're working on and you can write a um, description about it github so as you can see, repo name test GitHub description GitHub tutorial, and then you can make it public. For private, you would require uh, a subscription to the website, but that's why GitHub is mainly an open source type of um, community. You just exchange projects. It's open source. You work, collaborate openly. 
and I like to always initialize this repository with a readme. A readme is basically the text um, about the about page. Let's just call it a, an about dot text of um, the repository. And get um, for dot get ignore. This is for like if you're working on a certain project involving, let's say if you were working on an Android application, you would include this android.getignore because um, sometimes you don't want to continually push these like setup files of the Android application constantly on GitHub. Um, the way what happens is that there will be conflicts w with if you're collaborating with another person where their setup files like every time you compile that Android application some of the setup files um, change a little bit and then you get conflicts because your friend setup files even though you're working on the same project your friend setup files are a little bit different these config files I would say not setup but the, the config fake files are like a little bit different and then you get all these conflicts so dot get ignore ignores those um files so that you don't get conflicts and for add license you can just add um a license if you want to and you can leave these both as as none for now because we're just doing a test so you, uh, to get a feel for github then you just um click create repository now after creating a repository you have this right test github repo test github the readme um, by default it had it um, has the title and then um, has a description of it and then over here HTTPS clone URL uh, how github works is you have the URL and then you clone the link to get the files on the repo. So after that's done, you are over here. You can just type, um, go to your desktop, change directory to desktop. As you can see, ls see if so. I'll just clear this and now. What I want to do is I want to clone the repo that I just made. So git clone, git clone is the command that you would use if you would want to copy or basically download all the contents of the repo link that you're downloading. So over here, um, at HTTPS clone URL, if you click this button, um, it will clone the URL. Well, um, copy, copy the URL. So copy cl clipboard. Now after I have copied, I can just right click over here and then edit and then paste. Now basically this is what you want to do. Git clone the URL. Um, and there's always this dot git at the end, but I'm pretty sure that's unnecessary. Um, not too sure actually, but okay. You copy the URL, you paste it to git, git clone URL clones the URL and now you have created a folder test github with all the contents there would there would only be one content in this case readme.md and um, it's in a folder called test github now if you change directory into test github as you can see currently I am in the folder uh, test github parentheses master uh, master is the branch that we are on now the way github works which I don't I don't want to go in too deep because that's for future tutorials if uh, this one goes well but master is basically the main um, main branch that you're on now the way branches worked is think of a tree where you start at this uh, at the trunk of the tree now the trunk I would consider the master branch um, the trunk itself and now you can create different branches which think of it as um, sticks um, going you know branches going out of the trunk now these branches could have features of your project different uh, implementations of your project 
and your collaborators can create new branches until they merge back into the main branch, which would mean that the branch circles back into your trunk. The trunk keeps on going up in this case, and then you, the master, is like the final golden product. Okay, so now you can ls to uh, see the contents. There was only readme.md, and you can. Um, vim readme.md now vim simple text editor if you don't know um, you can also use different text editors like nano or emacs or you can also if you're not familiar with those at the moment you can just go to your um, folder that's created then you go to test github and then you just right click and edit with notepad of course or you can open with um, let's just say notepad which you probably have yeah so you can go to more options and then find notepad over here and then um you can just edit it that way but for now um it's always good to know when one of these terminal um editors like text editors so that uh you just know for the future um now it, once you vim in my case, when you when I vim, um, text GitHub, GitHub tutorial. Now I can add a new description. Let's just say that I want to say a little bit more on the README, what this project about, so that when new people look at it, they can see, oh, this is what um, what this project is all about. So I'll just say, test GitHub is a repository for showing the bare minimums of github and how to maneuver function etc okay so that's a pretty okay description we got we have a okay description over here um also i should have explained how um, vim works basically you can use the arrow keys to go down up left right if you press insert or I, um, you can start typing stuff. Like you can start typing anything. And then if you press the escape button on the top left, um, you can get out of that insert. And then to save, you press, um, once it's escape, like you would insert, you would write what you had to do. Then you would press escape to get of this insert thing that you see at the bottom over here. Um, you don't want to be in this. Th Think of insert as a mold that you can be in when you use um, Vim. So insert mold is triggered by I or insert. Now afterwards, um, you press escape to get out of all the modes. Once you're out of all modes, you can do colon um, Q to quit um, without saving. But to quit and save would be X, colon X. Then you press enter, it saves it. Locally, um, if we open up readme.md again with notepad then you see it's it's changed um, these equal signs that you see over here are is just a line it, um, it's going to print a line on the repository you'll see so now how this works is um, first of all you would want to get status now get status what get status Basically, you know, to be very brief about it, it's is that it just tells what's modified, what's not modified, the changes. Okay. After you know the changes, you modified a file. Now, let's say I want to update my repository online with this new uh, README because I made changes, and I want to I want to update the description. I want to say that this file has a new description. Now, what I do now is um. I need to add the changes, right? So you can use git had to add um, new files into a staging area. Think about it this way, right? So you're on your local um, side, your local directory, and this is how I understand it. Um, you're on your local side. You push a, you add, um, you add quote quote like you're not actually pushing it yet, but. What add means in this case is you're adding to a staging area. Now, staging area, 
let's just say that it's a place where it's not exactly on the repo on the website yet but it's in between your local and online um, on the repository for github now when you add all the change files you need to add all change files to um, push onto the website of github now you add readme.md and then for committing I would understand although some people say that committing would be actual like pushing onto the repo it, it doesn't it isn't actually it's not like really pushing the way I understand committing is that you're documenting the change and you're finalizing the staging area to be ready to push onto the repo now um, commit works with dash M now let me just now okay so what I just uh, typed in was uh, github dash help and no git commit uh, dash help and another thing too you always need to put git behind all these commands um, now git commit what I want to do is commit a message onto um, onto that file that I just added to the staging area uh, so that it's finalized it has um, a committed think of commits as like a documentation type of thing so every time you update your github repository you're documenting your changes every time you're saying okay hey I added a new file and then your your collaborators can see oh hey um, you know Joe added a new file Sam Sam added this file and um, he says that it's just a bug fix okay so that's how it works so you would do git commit dash m and then I would say updated read me a file for better description simple simple updates simple changes simple commits when you press enter it says that um, the updated readme file for better description a useful command would be git log to see what happened now author my name my email date initial commit initial commit was when um, I first created a repo and then here's the second commit I changed um, I changed the readme and then I added a new commit that says that updater readme file for better description now each of these commits has um, these little um, long actually not little these long hexa type of um, text and that's that's for more advanced but um, basically the way you can understand it for future reference is that you can go back like you can revert time and then go back in time to this certain part of um, the git log because you have the commit um, ID let's just call it commit ID for now so git log is a good command and git status is always good to know that status see your branch is ahead of origin master origin master basically um, origin the way I understand it is you're uploading from a remote like your local to local to the github uh, repo and origin is what we named our like current location and then master would be where we are heading to we want to push to the master branch nothing com to commit now once there's nothing to commit to commit um, you're at the right place you can if you did not have a origin a remote origin then you can do so by adding the origin local to whatever repo that you are um, uploading to or pushing to so the repo was called let's see https colon slash slash github dot com slash my username slash test github dot git now you always need to add um, remote add origin https github.com slash uh, your username or the username 
that the repo is owned by and then uh, the repo name afterwards then dot get now enter fatal remote origin r exists now that's because whenever you clone um, a repository it automatically um, created that origin because of course you're cloning you're downloading it it's gonna create the origin to which you um, are currently at and but if you're creating a let's say new completely new um, repo and let's say I did not clone it then I would have to um, get remote add the origin this is a necessary step if you're not cloning right so after you add the origin you would uh, let's see we commit well, so here are the steps so far you added you commit then you remote add the origin and now I guess lastly you would just push it now get um, push dash u origin master now um, how this works is I'm pushing um, dash u is for saving uh, this part origin master for my current location I would say the you know remote pushing and then for uh, master would be the branch that I'm pushing to I'm push I'm pushing this to the main branch um, so that you can see and then you press enter you type in your username you type in your password now it push now see if it says branch master set up to attract remote branch master from origin this committing master to master to HTTPS 100% both of these now it looks like everything worked out well and if I go back to um, the repo and I refresh see now it has updated this is the commit that I just did and here is the updated um, readme.md which uh, shows over here the equals turns into this line you can see this line and then here's the title now that's how github works now you can add different files add commit and then push and then you're done so let's just go over we'll make a new file now you can uh, use this command touch um, test file dot text touch test file dot text will create um, a new file onto uh, basically onto the local um, a local drive here it'll create just this text file press enter now if you ls to see what's on text file dot text is created now this is always local now even if you create files on your local drive if you refresh the repository nothing changes so changes are only added like files changes are only added if you add and then commit and then you push if you don't do those three steps then nothing changes on the repo on github now if you do um, get now nah, first of all we want to add something to that text file right so I'll use vim again I'll insert and then I'll type some stuff this is um, a test text file for github okay and now that's what it says it was in insert mode that's how I could use it escape colon X and I'm gonna save that okay so now that I have that new file let's check uh, the git status at the moment oh, okay it says that include in what will be committed untracked files I have an untracked file that's not like tracked yet so you know git add commit or for tracking and then push is to for actual pushing onto uh, the repo now again let's go over you get add you can use um, dot I believe to add untracked files and then you do git commit dash m 
test file text is added as a test. Remember the command git commit dash m. You're committing, or should I say, documenting basically dash m for dash m means a message, and then you type in the message in quotes. Press enter. Okay, it inserted test file dot text. So you can add dot for just untracked files, which is on git status. And then let's just look at git log for a second. Okay, a new commit was added, and then you can see over here. It shows you the time also. And then if you go to git status, nothing to commit, working directory clean. And now you can just simply git push. Now since you did git push dash u um, origin master, dash u saved um, the setting for origin master. So you can now just git push. And now you type in your username. You type in your password, and it pushes onto the master branch because that's what we specified. And if you refresh, now hey, there's a text file, test file dot text. Now we only added um, new files, and we committed only the new files, and so this is why this part, um, this file only has this commit. And if we actually click on text file dot test text test file dot text then you can see it's exactly what I wrote and basically that's how you do the bare minimum pushing and pulling well pu pulling I didn't explain too much but basically how you pull is you would do git pull dash u origin master you don't have to do the dash u because we already did it before but you can do git pull origin master this will pull um, all the contents of the current repo and it will serve as let's say that another friend was working on a different file now um, let's say he was working on like a.txt right and he wrote some uh, file um, something in the a.txt now you can do git pull or gmaster to basically pull that and update um, your local drive with what is currently on the repository now and then I'll just Get pull, are you up to date? See, because we have everything currently on the repo. So that's how the pushing, pull, add, and commits work on GitHub repos using the shell. Uh, hopefully, this was a useful tutorial. One last thing is that over here, uh, for now, you can see that the branch is master, but if we were to make new branches, it would have a list of the branches. Um, let's say that people created, you know, new branches. The tree um, di diverges into smaller branches elsewhere. Then this would be the place where you can check what the branches currently have. And that's basically it. You can um, see some useful data over here: pulse, graphs, network. You look at graphs for a second. Contributions. You can see the pulse um, and the network. The network is most useful because you can actually see the network graph would be like, oh, hey, if I created, let's say in between this one, my friend created a new branch, then it would be something like this. And then uh, let's say another one of my friends created a new branch here, then it would be like this. And all three would be proceeding normally, but there would be different implementations of that branch. And that's basically how GitHub worked. It really just a kind of tutorial it was very casual tutorial this time around about the functioning of github for very um new people if you're watching this if you're an expert then i probably repeated a lot of things but i'm trying to get in your head this is for um just very new people to github because when i use uh, github for its first time confusion so much confusion and hopefully I helped you guys learn a little bit more about GitHub. So thanks for watching. If this tutorial is good, maybe I'll go more in depth with future tutorials about GitHub. So see you guys later.